let's start out first with this image primer and you can follow along or read it on your own time. So what I want to really talk about is this idea today of what a raster image is versus a, a vector image. Now Photoshop is a raster program. It handles things based on pixel data. So, And then a vector program is something that is like AutoCAD. I'm picking points and lines get filled in and space between those points. And in some cases they're dynamic because I'm picking one point from the other point. Um, so you can see here and in a raster image it's using a grid of pixels. So if I think of when I look really, really closely, right, and I take a, I draw a line in AutoCAD, and then I export it out, or I do anything, um, or I take a picture of myself, and it's like this really tiny image that I put on Facebook, and it looks like really blurry, right? And it's got like these square edges around things that are rounded. That's the pixelization happening, um, also called anti-aliasing. And what it's doing is essentially only every single pixel can only hold one single color, right? So the higher a resolution, when we talk resolution, the more of a rev resolution I have, the more colors I can have within my document in some cases. There is a point, though, where resolution is too high on a raster image, right? So if I go... And I'm, everybody's going to make this mistake when I go to resolution on an image and you pick like a 600 DPI. So what do you think DPI means? Dots, that was close. Dots per inch. Dots per inch. So how many pixels per inch do I have? So if I have a 100 DPI, that means I have a square that's 10 pixels by 10 pixels. Okay? at one inch. So if I want to make a poster that's 36 by 24 at 100 dpi, that means I'm going to have 3600 pixels in one direction and 24 pixels in the other direction times by the whole spread. That's how many pixels I get. And we'll go through Photoshop and show you all that stuff. So just be aware of that. Now that's a flattened image, right? It is what it is. Kind of like the photographs back there. Now when I'm in a vector program, things are a lot crisper. Now you're seeing in the graphic here that right, the kind of what's happening with those lines is because it's printed, but this is what happens when you print to a raster image and then put it on somewhere. I can't, right, I'd have to redo this and actually draw the A letter A, and I don't feel like drawing that letter A. Okay. Right? So this this pixelization of that line, right? is happening because we've rasterized a vector image. In theory, those should be nice, crisp, straight lines. And the only pixelization that happens is based upon whatever my computer screen gives me. So even your computer screen is based on little little blurbs of light. So I'm limited by the crispness of the That's why Apple, you know, resolution, the retina display is like so so good, is because this idea of how they're managing color profiling, how they're managing um, pixelization within the, um, the back end of the computer. Right? So, um, a raster program is going to take that same letter A and make it really, really chunky. Okay? Because basically, you're trying to take a square and turn it into a circle. Make sense? So that's raster versus vector. Now, programs that run raster images. Oh, Mr. Graphics Card. I'm earning you. So, raster images, right, is a Photoshop program. Within this Photoshop program, I'm going to go ahead and just close this one off. Right, I'm going to do File, New, and we'll go into this um, a little bit farther once we do the tutorial. So, just follow along. So, when I look at this, right, so when I'm in Photoshop, it's never going to give me anything, at least with more setup. This is all applicable then. One, I have a color mode, I have background contents, and we'll talk about what this is. And then the key point is what's my resolution, what's my width, and what's my height? And that's basically my image. So typically, we're not making our boards, our layout boards, 
in Photoshop anymore, where uh, before there was InDesign, we would do these things in Photoshop, which made for a very, very ugly drawing on presentation day. Um, so generally speaking, I'm going to set this up and use it as an image editing software. So all this matters. So if I go 100 pixels per inch, I click on OK. Right, it gives me an image based upon that set pixel range. I go to image size, image, image size in Photoshop. Right, I can always change that. So what it's giving me, it's saying at 100 pixels per inch, right, so recapping all this, at 100 pixels per inch, it's a good place to be, um, generally speaking, to lower file sizes and follow my workflow to end up in the images, not to keep them large. Um, at 10.24 inches, with a width of 26.46 inches, and then I have how many pixels per thing. So there's that math being calculated for you. Okay, if I increase my resolution, right, so I still have my 36 inch board by 24 or whatever it may be. And then I go to say 600 because I'm like, ooh, I want my work to be super sharp. I end up with the same size, but then I end up more pixels within that color range. Now, unfortunately, most of the stuff when you go to print, so back to this idea of DPI, DPI corresponds to also resolution, pixels per inch, dots per inch, same kind of thing. When you print, and most printers cannot print beyond a resolution of 150 DPI. So even though you make your image 600 pixels per inch and super, super sharp, that printer will never, ever, ever print to that resolution, okay? So there is absolutely no necessity to ever go really above 150 pixels per inch. Okay. How many people have made this mistake? No? I'm not, where are you on? So that's just rule of thumb for printing. Be nice on yourself. Um, otherwise, when you hand in stuff to me, it's like 200 megabytes, and I look at you like, wow, you did not go back and read through the material. Okay. And we'll come back to Photoshop. So Photoshop is a raster program. If I see you drawing in Photoshop, and you know there might be some of your professors and studio mates that do do Photoshop drawing, so I can draw a line and stuff like that. But if I see you drawing lines like this, right in Photoshop, I'm going to be a little cranky because right it is not a drawing software, right? You'll see the pixelization automatically happening. So look at this, right? Zooming in. Look at that. Look at that grossness on the edges. It's gross. Ugly. Makes it look like you, you're not a designer. It looks like you're still using Windows Paint. Okay? So no drawing, only coloring and photo editing. So we're going to show you today what the purpose of all this actually is in Photoshop. It's not a, it's not a drawing software. So your vector processing software in the Adobe Suite is Adobe Illustrator. So Illustrator is the vector version of this. Now the difference between that is I go File New as well. It's going to have the same dialogues um, within it. Of course I have all this Adobe software open today. It'll take me a minute to crank through it. So now same thing, same idea um, as we did with InDesign. There, these dialogues carry through the entire suite. You'll see when we get to um, the auto portion that there's certain things that just carry on in each piece of software. Um, so we should be used to this. Now, what's nice is we can get a, we can automatically tell it now to not do points and actually do inches versus InDesign that always wants to be in point values. Right, so that changes it, and we can set up our document size that way. Um, now, since this is a drawing program, setting up um, spaces, right? I'm not setting up image sizes. I'm actually setting up a canvas, right? So there's a difference between the image canvas, like a raster canvas, and then a vector canvas, right? And so when I'm drawing in, in Illustrator, this is where you're actually drawing straight rectangles, right? And I'm assigning stroke values to them, same as kind of in design. Um, I prefer that you do all drawing if you're going to draw in, in Adobe and not use AutoCAD. 
um, use Illustrator to draw. I can color that in, right? I have all kinds of different um, things I can do. I can take my line, I can draw my line. I can continue to draw my line. Okay. I can add anchor points. So this idea of being able to dynamically edit the software is there. So I'm going to go to my anchor point tool, add anchor point. So I want to edit that point. Okay. Right. And I can then dynamically kink that. Right. So I have the ability to dynamically begin moving that and actually draw it. So that's all based on the same same thing with curves. So when I draw as well in, in Illustrator, if I want to draw an arc, right, I have an arc tool. Within the arc tool, what's a little different than the line tool, right, is I kind of have to just kind of draw it. And then I have this thing called a shape handle. So it's kind of not giving you the ability to be precise with it as, as much as we can in AutoCAD. Um, and I need to add an anchor point. So I have my arc and I'm going to add points within that arc. Let me zoom in on this for you. Remember, control positive. Again, not following along, just watching me. Right, when I get so far in, you'll see this tangent happening by the point. So when you hover over it, it gives you like this green little thing. And sorry if you can't see that, unfortunately. You want to spend the time customizing it so you can see it watch the video. It says handle on it, so that's a shape handle. If I grab that handle, again, using my selection tool, group selection tool, grabbing that, I can then begin using the shape handle to control how that line is appearing, right? That works with arcs. Okay. An anchor point and path. Does that make sense to everybody? So now that, right, so if I zoom in on that edge, so I have a curved line, I zoom in on it. See how clean that is compared to the nastiness of the polygon we drew in Photoshop? Right? That means when I print, it's going to be sharp. Okay? As long as I take it to InDesign after this. Make sense? Everybody grasp it? Okay, so what's raster? I'm going to stand here until somebody answers me. Pixels. What's vector? Lines and curves connected between what? Dynamic points. What software do we use raster images in? Photoshop. What software do we use vector images in? AutoCAD is one of them, but we're not there yet. Illustrator for now. Okay. So again, and then where do we compile both raster and vector images? What did we do last week? Where do we compile all of our data? InDesign. Okay, so we're working backwards through that software graphic. So remember now, when we look at this software graphic, our workflow, our Bible, our, our path to awesomeness, which is this software workflow from class one so I'm going to rename this thing Path to Awesome for you. You never forget it. Software Digital Workflow, right? Remember this graphic, right? Uh-oh. Slow today. <laughs> We're only doing three of them. Right? So here we are, right? We're at the Illustrator mark, and we're at the Photoshop mark. So Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator. Okay? We're starting to move backwards and navigate through this whole thing, okay? Cool. Again, so now AutoCAD, right, when we get the vector drawing, at any point you see this vector program going into Photoshop. And somebody's gonna make this mistake. So that's why I reiterate this. Cool.